Hello, my name is Jordi Nelis and um, I have been working in the Food Smartphone project in the past three years to develop uh, an electrochemical or colorimetric uh, biosensor for the detection of uh, mainly of uh, marine toxins. So for the marine toxins, they are quite uh, important uh, contaminants that are uh, more and more often detected in shellfish uh, because of climate change, which basically uh, causes the water to heat and also creates more sunlight and then due to uh, more nutrient rich uh, runoff from uh, urban areas we get the perfect mix to create uh, harmful algal blooms that produce these toxins that then in the end end up in the shellfish so it's needed to have a, a rapid detection uh, mechanism for farmers to be able to detect these toxins uh, on site in, on the farm so what I've basically been working on is to use nanomaterials, so especially gold nanomaterials as well as some carbon nanomaterials to try and create signal enhancement both for a colorimetric assay and an electrochemical assay that could then both be hyphenated with a smartphone to be able to create a really a smartphone based uh, detection system. So um, let's go first now to the conference room where I will explain to you the mechanisms of both of these assays. And after that, I will uh, walk you through step by step how these assays are uh, performed really in the lab. And I'll finish then with uh, some uh, concluding remarks. So, okay, thank you. Okay, so the system uh, for colorimetrics is basically uh, based on taking an image with the smartphone camera, which is then registered in uh, red, green and blue or RGB values. Then with uh, the app uh, that was developed, we can separate those in different channels. So the red channel, the green channel and the blue channel. And we can also mathematically convert them to other channels such as the L, A and B or the H, S and V channel from different color spaces that have all separate properties that can be used to try and optimize the color quantification. Um, once we have separated these channels uh, from each other, we then use an algorithm that allows us to combine the channels from the different color spaces. So for example, the R from RGB with the H from HSV and the L from LAB to create a new color space, RHL, that doesn't normally exist, but that might be uh, beneficial for the color that we want to quantify, the specific color we want to quantify. Um, we've done this with the app that uh, Jung Feng Zhao has developed that you can see on the top here. So we simply take a picture of the image, um, then that gets sent to, the, to uh, a server where we do some cloud computing to create the different channels, uh, mathematically convert them and then combine them. So here we did try the 129 different channel combinations of those nine channels that I showed. And we didn't then run simulations for the different uh, colorimetric assays that we had, so lateral flow assays for uh, different allergens and for marine toxins, as well as uh, pH strips that are uh, color change based. Uh, we then can select the channels that they have the lowest uh, errors in simulations and use them for the real assays. Uh, where we indeed found that several of those new color spaces uh, led to much lower error than we would get with the classical RGB system. For the electrochemical system, uh, we have worked with uh, different nanomaterials and uh, assays and then tried to select the most optimum version for the final uh, device. So first of all, we worked with a uh, magnetic bead based assay. So here you have the magnetic bead to which we functionalized uh, the, the toxin. And then you can, uh, like this, you can do the assay in the Appendorf, so it gets recognized by the antibodies that have an enzyme on them in the, in, in the Appendorf and then tra transversed to the screen printed electrode. And there you can hold the whole uh, immunocomplex on the electrode by using a magnet for uh, taking the magnetic beads to stay on the, on the working electrode. And then uh, we can get a, a signal by using a substrate that gets converted by the enzyme that's on one of the antibodies. So that's the first system that we used for domoic acid quantification in scallops. Um, in the system also we optimized uh, the use of different nanomaterials to get a higher signal. So we tried carbon black, which are the black balls, or uh, also gold nanostars and gold nanospheres. And we found here that carbon black was uh, much more beneficial than the other two. 
So then when we moved to the second system, we used carbon black. And in the second system, we got rid of the magnetic bead uh, system. And instead of using that, we just functionalized the working electrode directly with the toxin conjugate. We did that because in that way, it's more easy to make a multiplex system because you can have various working electrodes uh, on one total electrode system. And in that way, you can easily do a multiplex system. So here the signal is, uh, is uh, detected by using differential pulse photometry or DPV, which is an electrochemical technique that basically changes the potential and allows this molecule, which is attached here to this uh, antibody that is recognizing the antibody that recognizes the toxin. So this molecule, one naphtol, if you change the potential, it can get oxidized and it gives an electron that is then uh, uh, transfers to the working electrode, uh, which makes it possible to detect the toxin. And this system we developed then for the detection of uh, okadaic acid as well as uh, domoic acid.
Okay, so I hope that this video was informative. Um, now I just want to make some concluding remarks about the two assays. So to begin with the colorimetric assay, uh, the nice thing about this assay is that it's very rapid. You can detect uh, the contaminant within 5 to 10 minutes, depending on the lateral flow assay that you're using. Um, and it's also ready to use in the end for the end user. However, the disadvantage here is that you cannot uh, be very exact with your detection. So real quantification is not really possible. Perhaps you can detect a low amount, a middle amount, and a high amount, but uh, you cannot go much more uh, exact than that. On the other hand, the electrochemical assay is quite exact. It really allows you to quantitatively uh, determine uh, the amount of uh, okadaic acid or domoic acid in shellfish. So that's really nice. Um, the disadvantage here is that it takes a little longer because in total you have about one and a half hour of incubations and uh, measuring times uh, for one uh, for, for to do one detection um, and it's not completely portable yet so there are some steps in the extraction protocol that would have to be optimized and of course a slightly smaller potential stud would have to be used um, there are some uh, commercially available that could be used for this. And finally, we would have to develop the software that would allow automatic detection. However, I do think that the system is very promising for accurate quantitative detection of marine toxins in shellfish and has the potential to be very useful for farmers to make important decisions about to either leave their shellfish at the place it currently is because the toxin amount is low or if they see the toxin amount rising too quickly Harvest the harvest the shellfish and place them in another in, in another area where the where the toxins are lower, so they can be still sold off to the consumer. And that's that that's a bit it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.